This is Dr. Amel Drizi. Welcome back to why the entity chronic endometritis should be abandoned for the concept of impaired inflammatory state of the endometrium. And today we are dealing with hysteroscopic diagnosis and pathophysiology. For the record, these videos are based on our recently published paper, which I link to in the description below. We have already addressed in a previous video, whose link is in the description below, the problematic definition of chronic endometritis, which literally means persistent inflammation of the endometrium, knowing that normal endometrium is already in a chronic inflammatory state, which is why impaired inflammatory state of the endometrium, IISE, is a more accurate terminology than chronic endometritis to name a disorder. Today, we're addressing another paradoxical trait of chronic endometritis and why we should shift to IISE, the hysteroscopic diagnosis, by providing evidence from the literature demonstrating why most of the common hysteroscopic diagnostic criteria of chronic endometritis are profoundly problematic and how the concept of IISC puts everything into perspective. For the record, the International Working Group for Standardization of Chronic Endometritis Diagnosis, published in Fertile Sterile by mid-2019, Unified Diagnostic Criteria for Chronic Endometritis at Hysteroscopy. Micropolyps, Focal Hyperemia, Stromal Edema, Strawberry Aspect, and Hemorrhagic Spots. The main problem with these criteria is, many of them are typical signs of acute inflammation, not the chronic one. And the explanation is in the basics of pathophysiology. Acute inflammation is the defensive response of the body against whatever attack. Whether the attack is mediated by germs or by non-microbial agents such as trauma, foreign bodies, ischemia, allergenic agents, both cause the release of molecular patterns that trigger the immune system. By binding to specific receptors termed pattern recognition receptors, PRR, expressed on the surface of some cells whose role is to alert the immune system about a threat. These cells subsequently send molecular signals termed pro-inflammatory cytokines, which start the inflammatory response. Some of them act on the blood vessels, causing vasodilatation. Clinically, we have redness and heat. Some of them increase capillary permeability, causing extravasation of plasma and blood cells into the inflammatory site. Clinically, we have edema and pain. When the immune cells get into action, they cause destruction of the aggressor agent, but also destruction of the body cells. Clinically, we have loss of function. Finally, destruction of epithelial and endothelial cells trigger coagulation. Clinically, we have hemorrhage, petechia, and thrombosis. And so, hyperemia, edema, hemorrhagic spots, loss of function and pain, all these are typical signs of acute inflammation. And this has been acknowledged in all the references of immunology for centuries. Redness, heat, edema, and pain, these are the four classical cardinal signs of acute inflammation. The fifth one being loss of function. Now, some of the validated hysteroscopic signs of what is termed chronic endometritis are hyperemia, stromal edema, and hemorrhagic spots. Typical signs of acute inflammation, not the chronic one. And here's a demonstration. This is a focal hyperemia, red zones. But actually, here's how the endometrium looked like when I first entered the cavity. Healthy, pinkish, 
Now I simply decrease the pressure and scratch the endometrium with the tip of the scope. And here's the endometrium's response to trauma, hyperemia. Acute inflammation, not chronic, and not caused by germs either, but biomechanical trauma. Same during menses, chronic endometritis like endometrium. However, it is the one we observe during the acute context of menses. Another example is the important edema after some hysteroscopic procedures which all hysteroscopists experience at times. And so if hyperemia, red zones, edema and hemorrhagic spots are typical signs of acute inflammation, what does chronic inflammation look like? Classically, it looks like this. Normal endometrium is already in a chronic inflammatory state, remember? Chronic inflammation is known to be silent. No or very few signs of acute inflammation. What about chronic impaired inflammation or chronic IISE? How would it most typically look like? Well, it could manifest in a silent way where we would see almost nothing. There can be, however, micropolyps. Micropolyps have shown considerable amounts of plasma cells at histology. The fact is, in immunology, plasma cells are known to be inflammatory cells typical of chronic inflammation. The interesting part is, they are usually not present in normal endometrium, unlike the other inflammatory cells involved in chronic inflammation. Therefore, their presence is considered unusual, which is why they are used as a diagnostic criterion for pathology. Their presence designates a chronic IISE. But the big question is, how come plasma cells have also been demonstrated in patients with typical hysteroscopic signs of acute inflammation, like hyperemia, edema, and hemorrhage, correlations have always been reported in the literature. The explanation is true acute inflammation signs do reflect an acute inflammatory response to a transient stimulus. However, they could also reflect a persistent or a chronic inflammatory disorder. Because a chronic inflammatory disorder is very well known to be the perfect ground for repeated acute inflammatory episodes. And also, recurrent acute inflammation is one of the mechanisms of chronic inflammation. Yet, not the only mechanism. Chronic inflammatory disorder could also result from a failure of the organism to resolve an acute inflammatory episode due to impaired pro-resolution mechanisms, failure in eliminating the aggressor agent, long-term exposure to a causative factor, or an autoimmune process. All lead to persistent inflammation, sustainment of the acute episode towards a subacute or even a chronic one. A very simple example is skin disease, acute versus chronic dermatosis. When we see this red lesion on the skin, we can easily recognize typical signs of acute inflammation. Now, this could be simply transient, an acute inflammatory response to a burn, an irritant or an allergenic molecule. Yet, this could also be an acute episode of a chronic dermatosis. In this case particularly, this is psoriasis, a chronic inflammatory disease characterized by recurrent episodes of acute dermatitis subsequently sustained in a subacute or a chronic fashion because of autoimmune disorder.
In hysteroscopy, acute signs can be related to a transient IISE or a chronic one. To pose the diagnosis of a chronic disorder, other criteria are needed related to the context, to the etiology, as well as pathology, all of which we will more fully address in upcoming videos. However, hysteroscopy is the only method capable of demonstrating the very fundamental signs of inflammatory disorder within the endometrium, which is reasonably the very first step in the diagnostic process. Like skin examination is the first step towards diagnosing dermatosis. We cannot say psoriasis without demonstrating inflammatory skin lesions. And we cannot reasonably eliminate an IASC if we do not first examine the endometrium. And hysteroscopy happens to be the simplest way to do it through eye examination. Especially as plasma cells can no longer be regarded as the only pathological criterion in the impaired endometrial inflammatory cascade, which we will address in the upcoming videos. And so that's it for today. You can read a lot more in our paper, which I link to in the description below. Coming up in the future, more videos about etiology, histopathology, and therapeutic management. Thank you for your attention.